stative verbs in the perfect tense. Let us now look at what stative verbs look like in the perfect tense. And we'll look at the imperfect a little later. Now, what I said before is that stative verbs, they change the theme vowel, but the prefixes and the suffixes stay the same. So it's just the theme vowel that we're really concerned with. So, our basic form, pakad, looks like this. This is our paradigm verb. And we see that the theme vowel is patach. That's what this is here. This one is the theme vowel. So we could write that out like this. If these represent our three radicals, our three roots, then this would be a comets and this would be a patach. So let me copy that a couple more times because we have two forms. Give myself a little more room here. Get rid of this. The theme vowel is what changes. Okay, we have two other patterns. The pattern we've seen so far, this one here with the patach, is the dynamic verb. And then we have two other patterns. One is a tsere for a theme vowel, and the other is a holum. So written above here. And these two are the statives, or generally. Uh, perfects that have these theme vowels are generally statives. And perfects that have a patach are generally dynamic. And this this set here is by far the larger set. There's fewer of these, even though there's two types. Okay, let's look at some examples of both of these, dynamic and stative verbs, just to make this clear. I've got a list here. Here we have katav, which means to write, shamar, which means to keep, nafal, to fall, and yarad, to descend. And you can see that these are all, well, let me give the definitions here again. These are all active, or they're all dynamic. Uh, to, to write is something you do. It's not a state or a condition. To keep, to fall, to descend. And they all have the patach as their theme vowel. So that's consistent with what we've said so far. Now here's another set. Kaveid. Kaveid means to be heavy or important. Zakain, to be old. Yare, to be afraid or fearful. Katon, to be small. And Yaho, to be able. So here are the definitions. And we see we have both verb patterns here. These have the tsere, and these two have the holum. And in fact, these are all statives. In English, it's easy to tell, because it's a 2b. Or is it 2b, and then we use some sort of adjective. Heavy, old, fearful, afraid, small, able, whatever. Um, so here we have both patterns, and they're both used for statives. Now, some verbs have both patterns. Lavash and lavesh. Lavash means to clothe, and lavesh means to be clothed. So here we have a verb where in one form it's dynamic, and the other form it is stative. To clothe is something you do, it's an action. To be clothed is a state, and it's reflected by the verb form. Sometimes, however, the distinction between dynamic and stative is not all that clear, and sometimes the forms are or opposite from what you would expect. So the categories are not uh, watertight, but in general they work. Uh, some examples of exceptions here, just so you're aware of them, uh, of where the type of things that can happen. Chacham means to be wise, which is a stative. You are wise, to be wise. And yet it has the patach, which is a dynamic form, typically. So that's a bit odd. Sane means to hate. And this is, isn't even clear. Is that a dynamic or is that a stative? Sane, to hate. Well, it's not clear. It seems to be holding or having the, uh, the uh, stative form here. But the meaning of the words is not clearly stative necessarily. And then here we have uh, karav and karev. They both mean the same thing, to draw near. And yet they have both forms. So... The categories are not always 
clear cut. But uh, in general, they will work. So we have three different types of theme vowels. We have the patach, then we have the tsere and the holom. And the dative's tend to use tsere and holom. So let's look at the paradigms, the full paradigms for the perfect statives. And first we'll look at the tsere. The tsere one is really easy because it's only in the 3MS form where you see the, uh, the tsere showing up. Everywhere else it's exactly the same as the dynamic. And I have here pakad as a contrast here. You can run through and compare it, but it's this one here, only this one, that changes with the, with for the for the tsere form. Now, when you have a guttural, or when you have an aleph at the third position here, you see more tseres for statives. So here we have malay. I should have said, well, kaveid I already gave you, uh, means to be heavy or important. Malay means to be full or filled. So this is a stative verb, but it's also third aleph. And alephs at the end of syllables tend to quiesce. We don't have that problem here because it's not at the end of a syllable. So there's no change for these uh, the forms with the vocalic endings that have pretonic reduction. Typically these are different than the rest because of this pretonic reduction. And if there's a theme vowel, well then the theme vowel disappears anyway because you have the shiva here. But in the rest of them you have an aleph that quiesces and so you get lengthening. See normally you would have a patach there, but it lengthens and what it lengthens to is the tere, which makes sense. It's consistent with this. And it lengthens because this has quiesced. Something is shortened, something else is going to lengthen to compensate. So, normal, um, the normal tere pattern is really, very, is, is really very similar to the normal pattern, the normal dynamic pattern, because it's only the one form that changes. It's only if you have a third aleph, aleph in the third position, that you start to see the tere in most of the forms. So that's what the tsere forms look like. And then the other one is the holum. And the holum, you see it in the 3MS form. You don't see it in these two, again, for the same reason. Vocalic endings, pretonic reduction. If you have pretonic reduction, the holum, or whatever the theme vowel is, patach, holum, tsere, it all disappears anyway. So you're not going to see it there, just like you don't see the patach here. See that there? You don't see it here. But you see it here as the rest of the dynamic forms. Um, so the holum goes through all the rest, except for these two, where you have reduction. And what it reduces to is the kametz hatuf, the short O. So this is yecholtem, stresses at the end. So these forms are not radically different. Uh, you do want to pay attention to the, uh, the, to the theme vowel, though. This isn't something I would memorize, because most of this you know anyway. Be aware that for the statives you have tsere, either of these two, and you have holum. That's the main thing um, for the perfect. That will, that will typically indicate that your verb is a stative. Not always, as we said, but typically.